Now, I think that in terms of having um, and making sure that there's somebody there to help you do that, to, to do it on your behalf, then I think that's the way to go. Uh, that's definitely but the way that it has it in worked in other areas. It's been called cruel and barbaric by your opposition numbers in the Labour Party and the SNP. Why have they said that? How hard do you find to, this to defend? Well, I, I think that that's quite... Um, Odd that you would say that on the grounds that at the time that this passed, if you remember way back in 2015 when this was brought forward to the House of Commons, the Labour Party um, was being run, the interim leadership was Harriet Harman, who had such a problem with it that at the time she said that she was going to be understanding of the policy and also instructed her MPs to abstain, not vote against it. So it, it seems to me rather odd that two years later, after the Labour Party abstained rather than opposed, they're now in the middle of an election campaign saying that, that this is something that, that is all of these different adjectives that you've but used. We are in where terms we are. Of, I'm trying to understand how you feel about it. And when you say once it's in place, then it can be reviewed, what exactly would you be reviewing? Well, what I'm saying is if there are specific areas in terms of how it works that can be improved, if people want to bring forward suggestions, then of course I'm open to that. So what do you say to people on the limiting of child tax credit to the first two, ch two children. What do you say to those who say this policy will lead to a big increase in child poverty? Doesn't it hurt the just about managing families that Theresa May says she's so keen to help? Well, I think you've got to look at the welfare reforms in the round. We know that more people uh, are in work than were when the, the coalition and then the, the Conservative government uh, came to power. Actually, child poverty rates have reduced. Pensioner poverty rates have reduced. More people that are on the, the furthest from work. Hang on so a in terms of people that have been out of work for when more than two years. When you say child poverty rates have reduced, according to a Scottish government publication, 260,000 children in Scotland are living in poverty, which is 40,000 up on the last year. Across the UK, now there are specific issues in, in Scotland. If in you your want backyard. Me to talk about the, if you want me to talk about the Scottish government's response of why uh, four hundred million pounds per year of welfare benefits go unclaimed in Scotland, then I'm absolutely happy to tackle the SNP on their record in Scotland. But you were but asking me about the, welfare's not the UK devolved. government. Well, well, I think then you've got to ask the questions of why, if across the UK child poverty is down, why specifically in Scotland uh, do you say that it's up? You know, there are issues that, that the SNP have to answer for themselves. Yes, we have lower employment, for example, in Scotland than there are across, across the rest of the, the UK. So there's lots of different issues in there. But is that not uncomfortable for you? welfare not being devolved, that you have to defend UK welfare issues. The SNP then had to dig you out of a hole, as an example, on the bedroom tax by giving extra money to housing associations so it doesn't have to be enforced. Is that not an uncomfortable position for you to be in? That they have well, to spend, I they have during to, the... Yeah, but that they have to spend money that is devolved to Scotland on getting people out of a bad place that the government in Westminster has put them in, your government. Well, no, I, I think that that might be a very nice uh, SNP press release that you've read out, but that's not it's the not, situation on the ground it's a question. in Scotland. The situation in Scotland is that I supported, in fact, led some of the calls on the devolution of more powers to the Scottish Parliament. Now, that includes not only powers over welfare. So, for example, if the SNP did want to have bring in you know, a, a large families uh, supplement so that the two-child policy didn't apply, they're able to do that. But they're also able to raise taxation in order to pay for it. So if there is something in Scotland wherein uh, the Scottish Government decides, of, of whatever colour, that it wants to uh, give more in some area... Um, that is only relating to people in Scotland, then they have the ability to raise taxation to pay for it. So I just, that's I just exactly what the UK government does on, on a UK-wide scale. I don't it understand why... broad taxation to pay for what it decides to be the, the welfare benefits of this country. I don't understand why 260,000 children in Scotland are living in poverty, which is up 40,000 on the last year. Welfare is not devolved. What is the answer to that question? Well, there are great swathes of welfare which are devolved. That's what I'm saying as part of the last Scotland Act that was brought forward. Do you take forward. no responsibility for this as a Conservative no, no, government? No, not at all. I think there's so much work that needs to be done. You have an administration in Scotland that's not a Conservative administration, but that is choosing to make uh, decisions themselves. Now, they are able to answer for that. I'm able to answer for my own party here. You then asked me uh, about whether it, it was 
right that uh, the Scottish Government used its money to do this. I said, no, they have uh, taxation ability, so they could raise taxes if they want to pay for something extra that only applies to Scotland, then they can do that by taxing the people of Scotland extra. In fact, we do have differential in our tax rates here in Scotland. That's what devolution is all about. Now, if you're asking me about do we need to do more, then absolutely yes, we do. I want to make sure that we don't have uh, a, a lower employment rate in Scotland than the rest of the UK because I believe that the best way out of poverty uh, is to be working and to have people in work in a household. These are elements that I absolutely am able to argue for and will be doing so at this election. And, and so I'm trying to understand this overall picture then when we talk about welfare because some people would put it, even though you're a hugely popular figure in Scotland, you're having to defend a government and you're part of a party where welfare reforms have hurt Scottish people. Are you trying to say no, then... Wait a minute, there sorry, in terms of that, sorry, to work. You've, you've did, you, you, that, did review, that is, you did review my questions there and reviewed mm. the answers that you gave me to get to this point. But what I'm trying to understand then, at that last bit where you just said there is more that we need to do, are you mm -hmm. saying there should be higher taxes in Scotland to help people, to help with what these I'm saying welfare is we need shortage? To, what I'm saying is we need to get more people into work in Scotland. We need to have a more dynamic economy in Scotland. We need to have fewer workless households in Scotland. We need to make sure things like that we've done on a UK-wide basis, like bringing in the national living wage, uh, does apply to Scotland. We want to make sure that fewer people at the lower end of the income scale have money taken out of their back pockets and taxation in Scotland. So they've got more money to be able to spend themselves. But you just made an assumption. You just said categorically that welfare reforms have hurt people in Scotland and I was challenging that because actually we see more people in work in Scotland. We see also that welfare reform, things like the benefit cap, have huge support across Scotland and have no difference in support in Scotland than they do in other parts of the UK. So SNP should raise taxes to pay for this but you wouldn't if you were in power in Scotland? What I would do is I would make sure we've got a more dynamic economy, that we're able to increase, rather than the SNP having cut 150,000 college places, we would make sure we had uh, people that were being trained beyond school age, there was more people in further and higher education. I'd make sure that there were more job opportunities, so there was a, a lower unemployment range, so we had more people in work and more people able to work um, uh, and to have an income which helps raise people out of poverty. I've got to ask you, Ruth, would you consider... A future in Westminster yourself? <laughs> I've got a pretty big job here, so uh, I, I think I'm, I'm pretty happy in Edinburgh right now, thanks. Ruth, it was very good to talk to you. It's quite interesting, isn't it? When she just gets pushed that little bit, it all starts to crumble. And maybe Ruth hadn't realised this as well, but when you're in a party full of sort of slimy, double-dealing, backstabbing characters, if you say something they don't like, they'll probably stab you in the back. So let's have a little listen to Ruth getting stabbed in the back by her own party. Was that Labour had it's half empty, people haven't turned up and MPs are leaving. But I, I listened to um, Ruth Davidson's speech you know, that she made. Um, and until yesterday, I thought she was kind of an interesting woman who could be the leader of this party. But I must say, I went right off some of the stuff she was saying, including asking her party to man up. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, I, I, <laughs> my problem with Ruth Davidson is that I feel like she could be an Annie party. I feel like she... There's nothing obviously conservative about her. I think she's a bit of a headline grabber. I think she will have been... She will have known perfectly well that that phrase, man up, would have hit the headlines. And she would have... As you're saying, she would have preferred it to be on the front pages, and that's not going to happen. I think the, uh, so I'm not a fan of Ruth Davidson, I, mean, I struggle to see the substance here. She's a bit of a kind of Twitter phenomenon in my view, but I think the real story of the Tory party conference is just the inability of any of them to get a handle on it. Mm. And Theresa May is not stamping her influence on this conference at all, and I think what's happening with Ruth Davidson and also Boris and Philip Hammond. And sorry, but the interview cut off there. And the last bit on the Tories today is David Mundell's horrible response to an MSP when he was asked why the Brexit analysis reports aren't being released. I just have to say that I think that the responses you've given today, though, give me absolutely no confidence that a good outcome will be achieved. And I do think people are entitled and people have a right to know how this is going to impact their lives and that information needs to be forthcoming. Well, we're just not going to agree on that, are we? Full Tory haughty arrogance there. Now, we started with Trump and we're going to finish with Trump. This was something that caused a bit of a stir. Malcolm Turnbull, Prime Minister of Australia, and probably not to be considered a good guy despite this, did an impression of Trump, and I think it's probably worth hearing. Uh, it's quite funny. Have a listen. 
Donald and I, we are winning and winning in the poll. <laughs> we are winning so much. <laughs> We're not winning. <laughs> We're winning in the real polls. They are so easy to win. Did you know that? I know that. Did you know that? I kind of know that. I know that. They are so easy to win. I have this Russian guy. <laughs> Believe me, it's true. It is true. Okay, so that's us for this time. And hopefully we'll be back with an interview next week. Speak to you next time. They got to go, they got to go They got to go, they got to go They got to go, they got to go They all got to go The rich man got money The poor man got nothing My wife is something but it's good for nothing But sympathy lies in the way Everybody's got to go They got to go, they got to go They got to go, they got to go They got to go, they got to go They all gonna go Go.